<clears throat> All right. It'll look like the stream is doing good so far. Hopefully the stream don't. Oh, uh -oh look like it might start messing up. But what I'm gonna do? <coughs> well, All right. I'm gonna stream is doing stream. good so far. All right. What's going on, guys? Let me Hopefully turn my volume down. So I'm recording live. I'm recording just in case the stream gets real janky out here in um, Montego Bay. Let every let me let everybody else know that I'm live right now. Hold on. Montego Bay. All right, we're going to chop this thing up. I ain't been on live like I'm supposed to be in a minute. You dig? I ain't been on live like I'm supposed to be in a minute, but I'm here. And we're going to make this thing do what it do, fam. All right. All right. All right, so what's going on, man? How y'all been? The stream is looking good so far. I almost said Mandingo Bay. Shit. Montego Bay. I'm in Montego Bay right now. Everybody come on in the room. Ah, man, how y'all been, dudes? Ladies and gentlemen, how y'all been? A lot of stuff we got to discuss on tonight's broadcast. Now, I'm, I got a nice little golden tan. You dig? I'm looking nice tan and fresh. Yeah. What's good with y'all, man? It's, it's been a minute. Oh, why is Peanut calling me now? Hold on. <clears throat> Hold on. Peanut, wait right till I go live to start calling me. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Let me tell her to not call me. Ah. Hold on. All right. <clears throat> I look greasy. That's your mom's breast milk glistening off me, nigga. All right, so where's my mods? Got my mods in the room. Yeah, no ganja feels on this one. No ganja feels on this trip. You know, but Montego Bay is beautiful, man. Y'all got to come out here and visit. The food is great. The food is delicious. Oh, man, I've been just gorging on jerk chicken ever since I've been here. Oh, man, I've been, I've been just getting it in with jerk chicken ever since I've been here. But anyway, let me, let's, let's get to some stuff. There's a lot of stuff we need to touch on. Um, did y'all see that dude, Andrew Yang, who was on The Breakfast Club? This guy, um, and Andrew Yang, he's, he said that he's a candidate running for president. He's an Asian gentleman. He's in the tech industry. And he started talking about reparations, how he's for reparations. But the thing is, a lot of black people were falling for some of the Jedi mind tricks that this guy was saying. A lot of people, a lot of black folks, started falling for the Jedi mind trick. And let me and another thing about reparations. Y'all see where I tweeted somebody was up here trying to give Black Lives Matter credit for the politicians discussing reparations. And y'all know that's a hog wash bucket of garbage. That's a bucket of garbage. Y'all know good and well it wasn't Black Lives Matter pushing the reparations agenda and forcing these politicians to talk about reparations. They know good and well it wasn't there. You know, that was us on the grassroots level. That was us on the real grassroots. And I mean, not grassroots in the sense of we're being secretly paid by white donors or corporations. So that, that's very interesting. They're trying to hijack the conversation. We got to, and, and some of these are the same people calling us bots and all that. So they're trying to hijack the situation. Yeah, L... Um, Black Lives Matter, that's an immigrant LGBT organization. You know? What's up, Christopher Ellis? Much respect. But, so this Andrew Yang guy, we're talking about reparations, and he started talking about, well, I like reparations. They're talking about Ty Nisi Coates, talking about his article reparations and see that's that's the go-to thing for a lot of these people 
bringing up the Ty Nisi Coates thing. And let me say this, Ty Nisi Coates is not responsible for this conversation either. Much respect to Ty Nisi. I have no, no problem with that, brother, at all. But he's not responsible for this conversation. Let's be real. Because I remember when um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, when she was talking about reparations, talking about we need to look at Hispanics and all that stuff for reparations, he, did, he didn't say nothing. So he's not in, in front of this conversation either. And he made a good argument and a good point, but he's not in front of this thing. But this Andrew Yang guy started talking about reparations. He brought up Ty Nisi Coates. And he said, and this is what a lot of folks miss. He's like, well, yeah, I really support the moral argument for reparations. A lot of y'all didn't catch that. He said he supported the moral argument for reparations. Watch these words. Shout out to Arden Plumbing. Please watch the words that these people use. They will use deceptive words, slip them deceptive words in there, and they have your head spinning. Stop bringing up all these other people. I don't give a damn. Y'all stop it. We're talking some real stuff in here. Y'all stop that. I don't care about such and such saying something bad about ADOS, we got to get off that. That's another thing. Every time somebody says something dumb, we don't have to jump on it. Who gives a damn? We don't care. ADOS, it's not a club that you can join and quit. Either you are or you not. You dig? Either you are a descendant of slaves in America or you're not. This is not a club that you got to apply for a membership to. We're just acknowledging our status. And I'm not arguing with nobody about that. What the hell are you arguing about? What is there to argue with? What is there to argue about? you got to understand, a lot of people just want to argue just to waste time. They just want to sit up and waste your damn time. Let's get off that bullshit. But like I'm saying, with Andrew Yang, he started talking about he liked the moral argument. Yeah, if you bring up the walrus, we're just going to ban you right now because y'all just in here talking dumb. We don't need dumb talk. We're trying to talk real right now. Yeah, and I don't want to hear no moral argument about no damn reparations. And then he said, this is the head fake. I believe in the moral argument about reparations. And what I want to do, I want to give $1,000 a month to everybody. And that's going to help black people too. That's a con game. And there's some Negroes sitting up here, well, damn, that's $12,000 a year. That sure could help. And the Andrew Yang guy was talking about, well, that with $12,000 a year, black people can start businesses. That's a head fake. Watch the head fakes. Watch the head fakes when they talk like that. Okay, if you want to give everybody $1,000, let's do that. And then let's talk reparations, because that ain't no damn reparations. It will not close the, the wealth gap. That's still going to keep us on the bottom. So sure, have at it. Give everybody a thousand, and then let's talk about reparations, because that ain't no damn reparations. You're going to have to let people know all this little slick talk and sideway banter, that's not no damn reparations. And I broke it down in an illustration. The racial economic barriers, it's a pyramid with blacks on the bottom, everybody else on top of black people. Giving everybody more money, that still keeps us on the bottom and gives all the other oppressors more weight to stand on us. So we're still in the same position. You understand? All they did was take the pyramid off the floor and put the pyramid on the table. That's all that is. Giving everybody something, and hopefully it'll trickle down to black people, that keeps us on the bottom, and all they do is pick up the pyramid and put it on a table where we're still on the bottom, and now we still got more weight on us. That's giving more people more money to oppress us. It does nothing about the, the wealth gap. The problem is people can oppress us, black people in particular, is because we've been deprived and denied resources. Black people, stop letting these folks run these Jedi mind tricks on you by telling you, well, everybody's going to get 1000 a month. Man, you can ball out with that 1000 a month. That's a con game. That's going to give other people more power to oppress you. 
Don't let them run that whole game about where we're going to do something for poor folks. Do you know most poor white folks, poor white people vote Republican? Most poor white people vote Republican. Reparations is something that we are owed, black folks. I want you to get this in your damn head. Understand the talking point you're supposed to use. Reparations is owed to black folks. They're not giving us a handout. The handout was free labor that they capitalized off of and all the unearned benefits they got from our labor. That's the damn handout. The handout is Jim Crow, which handed out privileges, benefits, and resources to white people. The handout was the civil rights and affirmative action that gave resources to all these other non-black minority groups. That was the handout. All these people came over and got unearned benefits. They got handouts. We were the field hands. Don't ever let nobody try to run no shit about, well, black women, y'all just want something for free. Y'all want handout. Y'all wanted that free damn labor. Y'all wanted that labor for free. You're living off that labor that we did for free. We are owed this. In every other group, they get resources and benefits when they've been wrong. We got this thing where, who's this son here? Hold on. Why everybody, shout out to Son Why is everybody texting me when I'm, when I'm live? Excuse me, guys. Hold on. It's a little hot in my room. Hold on. Turn my ceiling fan on. All right. Turn my ceiling fan on so I can chop it up in here. All right. But yeah, even welfare, they start talking about welfare. That ain't no damn reparations. Because white people get welfare. Everybody gets damn welfare. White supremacy is welfare. You then? So they need to cut that damn check and don't be afraid to say that. The day is over where we're just sitting around scared to say something. There was a brother from LA Times. He wrote an article talking about why it's so difficult for the Democrats to commit to reparations because they don't want to lose the, the working class white vote. Black people, and that's been the thing for a long time. Black people have been afraid to talk about reparations because we don't want the politicians to lose the white vote. White folks ain't going to support them. The white working class people are going to get offended. And I'm saying to black people, so the hell what? So what? I do not give a damn about white supremacists because if you have a problem with black people getting their just due, then you're a Sambo. I don't care about the white supremacists being mad at us for asking what for what we're supposed to get. They're going to be mad at you anyway. You sitting up here ain't asking for nothing. You sitting in here minding your damn business. You going on through your life and these same people are calling the police on your ass getting you killed. They going to be mad at you anyway. That's what black folks, we don't, we, they gonna, they mad at us anyway. They're going to attack us and target us anyway just because they can. So you might as well go for yours. You might as well just stand up for your damn self. If you lay down, you're going to get kicked. If you stand up, at least you can block some of the kicks. And black folks, and in Cornell West, I'm, I'm disappointed in Cornell West. I like Cornell West. He's like, well, reparations, he did an article, I think it was in The Intercept, the Intercept magazine or, or website or whatever it is, and he was talking about supporting Bernie. He was basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing, that reparations shouldn't be a deal breaker. Um, Bernie Sanders comparing him to Dr. King, and we should support Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders can go to hell. I like you, Cornell, but damn that. Bernie, he's some Bernie Sanders got policies for poor folks. And no, Cornell. No, Cornell. I like you, Cornell. But we ain't doing that, bro. We ain't doing that trickle down thing no more. Yeah, we're not doing that trickle down thing no more. People, you just go to vote. Let me tell you something. You got people out here with, man, 
Y'all talking about not vote, man. Y'all got to take action, man. We got to take action. Just sitting here saying don't vote, man. That's going. We got to take action. Let me tell you something. Black folks, and that's another thing that they do to con us. Everything ain't about taking action. Watch the words they use with black people. They tell black people, y'all need to take action. We think just moving around and doing anything is somehow going to fix things. We got to understand the difference between action and solutions. We have to understand the difference between actions and solutions. Black folks, we love just doing shit, just to be doing it. Just like marching. We think marching, that's taking action. We just walking around in a circle, but you ain't solving nothing. We gonna take action. We gonna walk. We gonna go be, get beat up in Selma. That's action. We getting some action. Lord, I got blood on me in Selma. Getting your ass whooped is action. That's a con game they run on us, man. Everything ain't about action. Everything is about solutions. They like us to just do stuff just to be doing it. And black folks, we get into that habit of just doing stuff, taking action without any type of um, rhyme or reason for it. That's why black folks, we, we do dumb shit sometimes. Sometimes we just walk around and just think of dumb shit to do just to take action. No, we got to start doing things that's going to bring solutions. And sometimes solutions is holding on and sitting back for a minute. Their strategic standing. Understand, family, who plays blackjack in here? Who plays blackjack? I play blackjack. I'm a blackjack player when it comes to going to Vegas and gambling. I play blackjack. And in blackjack, the, the name of the game is to get to 21. There's strategies in blackjack. They give you two cards and you got a decision based on the cards that you get. You either hit, take action and hit, and get another number, get another card, or if you get a certain number, you stand, you hold, you don't take action, you just chill. A lot of times, standing, not hitting, not doing anything, you will win. Life is like that. Sometimes, you have to be strategic and hold. You got to stand. You don't move. You got to know when to hold them. Like they say, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. You better know when to hold. And what we're doing is a blackjack move. We got to know when to hold. We're holding that vote until we get some of those blackjacks, until we get some of those tangibles. Know when to hold them. That's the action because it's strategic. We ain't just sitting back not doing nothing just for the sake of not doing nothing. We're being strategic about it. We'll let them self-implode on each other by us holding back our vote because they're not giving us anything. If we're going to vote for them and they're not going to give us anything anyway, what's the purpose of even asking if they know we're going to give them the vote? The black community, ADOS, we have been the most loyal voting bloc for the Democrats. Do y'all understand? We have been the most loyal voting bloc for the Democrats. And they have done nothing for us. All they've used us for is the foundation to build a pyramid of wealth for other people. If we don't participate in that, do y'all know all that stuff will fall down? Which it should. Either we get our resources or everything falls down. That's why they're so hell-bent on running this game on us and they're throwing out all of their sambos to try to get us to buy into a con game that they're trying to run on us. They're going to have to bring tangibles and we're going to have to stick to that. And I mean specific tangibles for us to close the wealth gap. None of that we're going to give everybody $1,000 we're going to give everybody some butter biscuits. We're going to give everybody some wealth. None of that. None of that. Either you give us our tangibles or we'll let you self-implode. We are not going to let you stand on top of us and build the wealth for all these other groups. Do you know they're amending the Civil Rights Bill right now? Google this as I talk. They're amending the Civil Rights Bill to expand more protections and benefits for the white LGBT community as we speak. And they got a lot of corporate backers to back this bill up. They got like Amazon, Twitter. They got a whole bunch of big money backing this bill up to attach the LGBT community to, to more of those civil rights protections. We don't even get civil rights protections. That's the problem. We sit up here and use these vague ass terms to include everybody. And it's assumed it's for us. 
and then everybody benefits off of it, except us. None of that. We ain't doing that no more. We can't do that no more. We simply can't do that no more. So all these dudes that Andrew Yang, I'm not impressed by him. If you want to do all that thousand dollars a month or whatever for everybody, that's fine. But then, then we're gonna talk about reparations because you're gonna put reparations on top of that. If we're gonna talk that, let's put some reparations on top of that. If you ain't giving us nothing specifically to close that wealth gap, we ain't got nothing to talk about. It's it's that simple. It is that simple. You then. You don't need me to run. You need us behind the scenes getting stuff done, just like the Asian community. They ain't out there like that, but they, they know how to use their money and use their resources and use their things strategically. You do? Sometimes the best action is to do nothing. Learn how to play blackjack if you don't know. Sometimes you have to make an assessment of the other player's cards and see, is it best for me to hit? Or is it best for me to hold? And right now, it's best for us to hold. If you, in any game, if you just keep hitting over and over, you're going to keep losing. If you play blackjack and every time you get cards, you just keep hitting, you're going to lose every damn time. And that's what we do. We just vote and hit and hit and hit and hit just to be doing it. That's why we lose all the damn time. Hold your cards. You got to hold your... Yeah, you're going to bust. You keep hitting, you're going to bust. Because if you... Blackjack is really about assuming. You have to assume that the other player has a 10. You have to assume that you're going to get a 10. So it's a lot of assuming that you have to make educated guesses when it comes to, to gambling like that. But we don't make educated guesses when it comes to voting and supporting politicians. We got this blind thing where we just going to keep on hitting regardless like some loyal damn slave. That's why we keep losing. And speaking of losing, another thing about this R. Kelly thing, I, people are talking about R. Kelly, that they did a press conference, I think, today with Gloria Allred and all this. I didn't see it. I'm over here doing my thing. Talking about they found another tape and all this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Black folks, stop supporting this whole R. Kelly bullshit. Stop supporting this R. Kelly Take down. Because this ain't about no damn justice. Stop it. And black folks, you're not being honorable. You, you're trying to make it seem like you're taking some kind of moral high road. At this point, Negroes are just helping the white supremacists protect other white predators. I'm not sitting up here. Look, R. Kelly did what he did. It was horrible. But what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to have people from the dominant society sit up here and ignore all the people in their community doing worse right now and they're not touching them and they're going to come over here with me talking about, okay, let's go get R. Kelly. And you think you're taking some kind of moral high road by joining up with these people going at R. Kelly. That's easy. And also, R. Kelly is a proxy for all black people. They use Negroes as proxies. I'm not attacking R. Kelly with them. If we got a problem with R. Kelly as a community, we deal with that. But I'm not assisting them in doing the damn thing, and neither should you. What are y'all getting out of hooking up with these white supremacists going after R. Kelly and they're protecting their own? And some Negroes will be like, well, damn, I ain't going to protect R. Kelly. He peed on people. He a pedophile. Okay, we got that, but damn that. Damn that. That's still no excuse for running interference for them. That's what you're doing. R. Kelly peeing on folks ain't no excuse for you running interference for white pedophiles because that's what you Negroes are doing. You Negroes are helping them cape and save and protect white pedophiles. That's what you niggas are doing. And y'all ain't no better. My thing is this. Y'all y'all sandbowing. You are protecting white pedophiles when you do that. Y'all, I'm not going to sit up and let them just pick and choose who they going to attack based on race, and we're supposed to sit here and help them. Shout out to Willie D. Willie D talked about that the other day. Yeah, you got Charlie Sheen out here giving him up his AIDS, and man, please. And then we're going to keep going at, at R. Kelly. Y'all doing double jeopardy every week. Y'all done found the tape, and y'all got these cats out here doing everything and anything, and you ain't doing nothing to them. 
and they're on code. See, they know how to be on code with their community. And they'll talk about it behind closed doors. But we are black folks out here showing out. Man, fuck R. Kelly, fuck that nigga, R. Kelly, R. Kelly. Black folks doing all with it. You're showing out for white people right now, black folks. You're showing out right now. If it's really about justice, we know how to handle certain people within the community. But some of y'all out here showing out for white people. Other, other communities don't do all that. They ain't about to go join, have you join them to go after their folks. That you're not, that's no moral high ground you're taking. That's an easy route. And that's what I don't like. I don't like Negroes attacking other black folks. That's too easy. It's easy to do that. You ain't doing nothing. It's like all these little rappers who get shot by Negroes. It's some, they just, in New York, some rapper got jumped and some other rapper, I don't know, all these little niggas, I don't know who they are, but he got shot in the leg. It's easy to do that. It's easy to shoot another black person and do all this stuff. That's corny to me. Especially cats down there in Florida when y'all got Zimmerman walking around and you shooting and killing rappers and all that. That shit is corny. And again, all this R. Kelly stuff pops up and while we're talking about R. Kelly, they're quietly manipulating that Weinstein case. They're pushing that back and forth. You getting? Yeah, that's, that's easy getting with white people to dump on other black folks. I don't, if we got problems with brothers, we deal with that, unless it's a coon. Then you can flog a coon publicly. You did? Exactly. The, um, Amy Burbs, yeah, she follows me. We follow each other on um, Twitter. Her documentary, An Open Secret, they didn't let that thing see the light of day. They killed all the distribution for that. The white community was like, hell no. You ain't going to put our dirty laundry out there like that. Yeah, Brian Singer, he's still out there. But the white community said, no, you don't put our dirty laundry out there like that. And that documentary, that say, that Leaving Neverland documentary, flopped. It flopped, flopped, flopped in the ratings. It flopped. And now Oprah, she connected herself to it, and people are looking at her funny style. But that thing flopped. That's why the second night it aired, it didn't even trend on Twitter. It flopped. Because it was a horrible documentary. So now, now that it flopped, and now that people ain't buying it, people are not going for the Jedi mind trick they tried to run. People are not... People see it, see it for what it is. They see that it was a, an orchestrated media slander, orchestrated from the top, that backfired because Michael's music is streaming even more. So now there are certain media outlets, they're trying to do what we do. Now they're trying to, to talk about the other side of the argument. There was one um, media outlet who interviewed Brandy Jackson. Shout out to Brandy. And what, what, I forgot what site it was for, but it was another one of these me, um, white media sites. They were like, well, we're going to talk about the other side. Why was the information about Brandy dating Wade? Why was that omitted? So they made a whole big thing about that, and they interviewed Brandy. And they're talking about, we have an exclusive with Brandy. No, you don't. We interviewed Brandy two weeks ago. Now they're trying to take credit. We got an exclusive with Michael Jackson's niece. We interviewed Brandy two weeks ago. Yeah. Media Eye. Okay, that's the name of it. Yeah, so people didn't go for it. People, that documentary was not a smoking gun, and they had to get Oprah to try to legitimize it. They tried to get Oprah to legitimize it, and people are looking at Oprah funny style. See, Oprah ain't got that much, you know. You know, investment in the black community where we don't just believe anything she say. And again, like we pointed out, Oprah had to pay out fifty thousand dollars for a woman who accused her dad of um, sexual assault. Oprah was hooked in with that John of God dude. She gave him shine, and that dude ended up 
going to jail for allegedly raping thousands of women. Oh, not thousands, but hundreds of women. She's all clicked in with Weinstein. She's clicked in with David Geffen. You know, David Geffen has questionable background. Um, Dr. Phil, like I said, Dr. Phil has been accused of molest molesting one of his patients. Look that up. What's up, Hudson? Vernon, you out here, you live in Jamaica or you from Jamaica? You there? Yeah, so people are looking at Oprah real funny style. People are looking at her funny. Yeah, and I played that clip of her saying that she she wished she was white. Remember that? I'm like, oh damn. Did y'all see that clip of her saying when she was a child she wished she was white? Hold on, let me let me play that if y'all haven't seen that. Hold on, let me play that for those who have not seen it. Hold on one second, guys. Oh, bear with me. Okay. Okay, let me let me play that. Okay, where we at? Y'all bear with me. Hopefully my thing don't start acting janky. Alright, let me play Oprah saying that. Let me skip that. There we go. Alright. Where we at? Where we at? Alright, listen to this. Did you ever wish you were white? As a little girl, I wanted to be mm. Yeah, I did. I was growing up in Mississippi and it's the kind of thing that I hesitate to say because when you say it, all the black groups call you and say, How dare you say it? But yes I did. Mm. Did mm. you ever mm. wish mm. you were mm. white? Okay, As a little girl What's up with that? Mm. I wanted to be Man, so that explains a lot. That explains a lot. And I talked about this on Instagram Live the other day. Listen, I lived in the South. I lived in Alabama. Look, I dealt with racism, white supremacy all my life. And there were some Negroes caping, talking about, man, she lived in the South. A lot of black folk, they were white. Let me tell you something. I've dealt with white supremacy all my life. I have never wanted to be white. I can honestly say the thought of being white has never crossed my mind. I have never saw people get mistreated and say, I want to be a part of the mistreating class. I've never thought that. I've ne I can honestly say I've never, never even fathomed that idea. Just the thought of being a part of a group, a part of a group of white supremacists who have a system that allows them to mistreat people based on race, that has always been weak to me. That has always been some weak sucker shit to me. I've always looked down at that and never wanted to be that. That's why I've always been proud of blackness. I've always, 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 always been proud of my blackness because I knew wasn't nothing wrong with me. I don't need a damn system of non-justice to give me a leg up. So I knew nothing was wrong with me. See, we got to watch people like that who sat up here as kids and racism just screwed their minds up when they wanted to be white, meaning they wanted to be part of the oppressor class. Instead of, I want to be in a position to bring justice. I want to be a part of the people doing the oppressing. So now we fast forward now and look at who's Oprah, who Oprah's hanging with. Look at the, the crowd she's with and look at how she's getting down with black folks. You dig? That says a lot. That says a lot. Yeah, so y'all saying Oprah's eating some Weight Watcher butter biscuits? She eating some, some gluten-free butter biscuits from Weight Watchers? <laughs> Yeah, I've never fathomed that idea. Never. You dig? <sighs> Speaking of funny style, the, the woman who got mauled by a panther, this woman got mauled by a jaguar. Did y'all hear about that? 
This white woman was at a zoo, I think in Arizona. She climbed over the enclosure bank to get up to the cage or something to take a selfie. And these people, this is how white privilege work. You're so used to just doing whatever the hell you want. You think you can do that with animals? So she got up there trying to take a selfie with the damn jaguar. And the jaguar bit a plug and snatched her ass all up and cut her to the white meat. And she laying on the ground all fucked up. And I don't feel now an ounce of sorry for her at all. I don't. Animals don't know nothing about no damn white privilege. So she went up there and got her ass mauled. She's lucky to be alive. I mean, that thing tore her ass up. And I want to know, does the woman have any criminal record? That's what I want to know. I want to know if that woman has been arrested. I want to know if she has been on any type of crystal meth. I want to know if she has parking tickets. I want to know what's going on with her. I want to know. I want to know. And that's very important because it was important with them in Ohio when the little black boy fell over the thing in, in Harimbi. They had to shoot Harimbi. The little black child fell over. Then all of a sudden you start hearing stories in the media talking about the, the little boy's dad has a criminal record. What? The boy's dad wasn't even at the damn zoo. And they're talking about his dad got a criminal record? Okay, so let's see if she has a record then. We need to see if she has a damn criminal record. And is the Jaguar okay? Do we need to, to get a GoFundMe to make sure the Jaguar is not going to be punished? Do we need a, a little Jaguar GoFundMe? Do we need to send over some lunch meat, some chicken pot pie, some Vienna sausages for the, the, the Jaguar? I mean, is he okay? You know? That's what I want to know. How's that poor Jaguar had to be traumatized like that? That, that Jaguar feared for his life. Black Jaguars matter. I don't feel one ounce of sorry for her ass. Also, let me show y'all this clip also on my gram over in Africa. See, these animals ain't playing. Let me tell you, the animals are waking up. The animals are like, man, come on, we, we done with this bullshit. We, we done. We tired of playing games with these folks. Hold on, where's my gram? Hold on, let me take all this stuff down. I got so many pages up. Hold on, where's my gram? Where we at? Where's my gram? Come on, guys. Come on, thing. Oh, there we go. Let me show y'all something. This was in Africa. And this is how the animals are just getting tired. The animals know what's up. So this is over in Africa. Over in Africa, they look like they were in the Serengeti somewhere. I can't tell where this is. But there are these elephants, as you see. There's some, some white dudes sitting here. And that elephant pulled up on their ass. Hold on. Where did, where did I go that fast? that fast. Hold on. All right, now look at this. Now the elephants looked at old dudes. They looked at the two white dudes. Well, hey, like the elephant remembered something. Let me tell you something about elephants. Let me tell you something about elephants. Elephants are very intelligent. Ele elephants are extremely intelligent, guys. Elephants are intelligent and they don't forget. So these elephants might have experienced something traumatic with some, some white supremacists coming over there, poachers or whatever. But these elephants looked at these dudes. Nigga, look, look at this. <laughs> now look at this. Guys, gonna look at the elephant. Why? Wow. He he made eye contact with the elephant. Elephant is like, what the hell are you looking at? This elephant. Is... 
Get the hell up out of here. Get up out of here. <laughs> now you see that he can pull up on them brothers like that. The elephant didn't pull up on them brothers yeah. like that. What? Was it the test? Yeah, the test. Whoa, bad boy. Shane, you okay? Yeah. All right. All right, hold on. Let me take that down. But, nigga, that elephant pulled up on his ass. For real, for real. Man. So. Dude, that elephant must have remembered something. <laughs> that elephant must have remembered something. Because that elephant pulled up. That, that, them elephants don't be doing that to the black folks over there. Like, I've been over there in the Serengeti. I done been over there, man. They, there's a respect that the people and the animals have for each other. And plus, they could just, you see the brother, they just clap their hands and the elephants move. So the elephants know, wait a minute, they ain't supposed to be over here. You better listen to these damn animals. The animals know they ain't supposed to be over here. You then? Man. <laughs> I'm drinking my Jamaican drink, Big Eye Orange. Don't give me a swig of this. I've been, I've been drinking sour sop. The whole shebang. Woo, good. Ah, man. But, um. Whew, sorry about that, guys. Boy, I had to give me a little swig. But yeah, that elephant pulled up. Ganja orange. No, 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 no. But, man, y'all got to come visit Montego Bay. It's very, very nice here. The hotel I'm staying is is all inclusive, and I was broadcasting on. Um, I got the AC on. I'm. Not, I've been. You know, shit. I'm shiny. Shit. You know. I've been. They gave me some. I got like some tea. Some liquid tea soap stuff. So that's why my face is looking shiny. But my face is hella clean though. Yeah, sour sop ain't no joke, man. The you know, sour sop is not a joke. But, um, man, yeah, Montego Bay is beautiful, man. Y'all got to come out here. And I'm at the Rio Hotel. Beautiful hotel. Beautiful hotel. The, the facility is nice. The food is great. The desserts, eh, I don't like the desserts. All the other food is great. That's the only complaint I have. They don't have really good desserts. But, you know, everything else is very good. And, you know, the hotel is great. A lot of folks here. The vibe is good. You know, the only complaint is some of the, the guests is one dude. <laughs> I was talking about this on Instagram Live. The the, the light skin, team light skin. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a semi-moist, some semi-moist cats up in here <laughs> who's kind of doing the most. You know, and I keep having to see them every day. You know, that's, you know, that's whatever. I keep having to see these dudes every day. They're doing the damn most. Ladies, y'all know when you go on vacation, there's always some dudes who's doing the most. There's always some dude. I say semi-moist because really, and, and semi-moist because the one particular dude that I, and I was talking about him, I showed him on Instagram Live the other day. The <laughs> The, I say semi-moist because the thing is, they're talking to women. These dudes are really, they're trying to get at women. So what it is more of, this nigga's just doing light skin shit. <laughs> you know the whole cliche of dudes doing, oh, he's doing light skin shit? Well, that's a real thing. <laughs> and that's not to disparage our light skin brothers. That's not to disparage him. But there's a, it's almost a little difference between just being moist and somebody doing light skin shit. 
And the dude is just being hella light skin. <laughs> the dude, first of all, um, I'm, I'm, when I when I get here, the ladies, y'all know, y'all know the when y'all go on spring break, it's always some dude who's just real extra trying to thirst trap. <sighs> and when I get here, I get to the hotel. So everything is cool. I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm laying out by the pool. I'm chilling on a little canopy thing. So I'm just relaxing. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm in the shade, but then a, I'm, my eyes are closed and a beam of light <laughs> just hit my eyes. I'm like, damn, what is the sun come out? Then I, I get up and I look over. It's the light-skinned nigga who got a gang of baby oil on him. He's walking around with a gang of baby oil in his shirt off. And the sun is gleaming off this nigga, blinding me. I'm like, oh, man, this nigga he's doing the most. All right, bro. Okay. All right, bro. So this dude, he's just walking around the hotel half dressed, you know, trying to impress the ladies. Wherever they're ladies, this one light skinned dude just show up doing light skinned shit. And then the next morning, I'm eating breakfast. It's like 8 30 in the morning. And I'm over by the breakfast area. And, you know, people are dressed normal. People are dressed normal. And I'm eating breakfast, eating my, my porridge. They had some cornmeal porridge, very good. I'm eating. Then I hear a flapping sound. I'm like, I hear this. I hear this. I'm like, what the hell is that? I'm hearing this while I'm eating breakfast. I'm like, are they giving pony rides around this one? Is that a pony? What is that? I'm eating, then I look over. It's the same light skin nigga. He's jogging in some flip-flops. He's running around with his shirt off and a choker and some little bitty ass shorts on and some flip-flops jogging and some shades. Oh, just, uh, damn. All right, bro. That's light skin. He's doing light skin shit. No. I ain't hating on the dude. I'm, like, I'm not hating on him. I'm not hating on the brother. I'm like, damn, bro. That's, all right. It's 8 something in the morning, brother. You thirst trap it. And then the next day, I'm trying to, I'm about to go in the pool. And I haven't swam yet because I was going to go in the pool. And I look on the, on the top of the pool and there's like oil, oil and glitter. I'm like, what the hell is this on the pool? There's oil and glitter, you know, oil and water don't mix. So the oil and glitter is floating on top of the, I'm like, what is that? Did he need to come clean this up? The fuck is this? So I look in the water. That nigga's underwater with shades on, like a damn merman swimming and oiling up the pool. I'm like, God damn. Well, he's just doing light skin shit. Dude. Okay, bro. I ain't, I'm not hating. I'm like, okay. The brother just doing light skin shit, man. <laughs> And just that when I was doing my Instagram live the other night, we we're doing the Instagram. I'm not hating on the dude. I ain't hating. On, when I was doing Instagram live the other night out here, I was in the, the lobby and there's like a bar area. So this is in the middle of the night. People are people are dressed formal. People are dressed in linen and people are dressed formal. This nigga show up in the bar with some gold and purple shorts on and some tennis shoes and a choker and no shirt and some shades on in the middle of the night. Like, nigga, this nigga got on some Laker girl shorts in the middle of the day. Dude. Trying to holler at the ladies. All right, brother. All right. All right, brother. Damn. I'm like, why this nigga's doing light skin shit? <laughs> All right. I, I'm not hating on the dude. I mean, more power to him. I'm like, but, bro, from a game perspective, you doing the most. <laughs> From a game perspective, you are doing the most. Yeah? Dude. No, the, he's hollering at women. This, he's, <laughs> my dude is hollering at the women. All right. You know, but you know, y'all know sometimes light skinned dudes be doing a little bit, it's all, just a little bit extra then. 
I saw him the other night, like when I went out, when I went out with my folks, and then he was, I saw the light-skinned dude with a team of other light-skinned dudes. It was like a whole crew, of light, <laughs> like a light-skinned club, and all of them was glistening, <laughs> like a little light-skinned gospel group, <laughs> anointed. <laughs> God, all these niggas was anointed with the oil of Jesus. All it was a whole group of oily light skinned niggas. <laughs> where where are y'all niggas from? I don't think he's local. I don't. I ain't really talked to him. So I don't know. I don't know where they from. I I don't know. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> so all of them, you know, was oily and had. <laughs> Chokers and moist outfits on. I'm like, all right, all right. What happens in Jamaica stays in damn Jamaica. Shit. Oh, more power to them. <laughs> Say the small ets. <laughs> oh, but they were doing the most, man. I just saw the dude. I'm eating dinner. He's st he's still walking around here with no shirt on. No short. He ain't got no shirt on and some swimming trunks and oily. Just walking around just to be walking around. I'm like, brother, go somewhere to the beach or something. Get you some women. Damn. My brother. Get what you're looking for. Pray for it. Man. Whoo, Lord. But um, speaking of Jesse Smollett, speaking of Jesse, y'all see those charges they gave him. They gave Jesse like 16 felonies. They gave Jesse 16 felonies, bro. They gave that dude 16 felonies, man. And my thing is, even though I don't like how they got down because they were blaming straight black men, somehow the media flipped that. Um, uh, gay black men. That's where your intersectionality is right there. Let me talk to the gay brothers. All the gay black men who think that you're intersectional, look at all those felonies that they gave him. I'm talking to the gay black folks, gay black people who talk about you're on the intersection of race and sexuality. Bruh, y'all under a system called white supremacy. There is no intersectionality as far as that. The white supremacists and the gay white community put their white race first. White people, gay or straight, they don't get no 16 felonies for no shit like that. They're trying to get at him for real, for real. See? And, and the white LGBT community, they ain't caping for him either no more. See, at first you saw how they were caping for him? All that went away. They ain't caping for him no more. Now he's just another nigga. So where's your intersectionality? Look at Ed Buck. They still haven't charged Ed Buck. You did? They still haven't charged him. So y'all better get off that intersectionality thing. So you think that um, focusing on your sexuality is going to get you out of the doghouse of race. And see, you'll be a useful idiot to them. They know how to use you when it benefits the white supremacists. You did? Ain't no intersectionality. Black folks don't ever go for that. And again, let's stop going for the trick bag that we got to be on some kumbaya thing with everybody else. No, we don't. We got to be on our own team and we got to look at our own team and we got to check folks who try to disrespect our team. We got to check people who disrespect our team. Because let me tell you something, you can't go to other places and disrespect. Y'all remember when Black China... Went over there to Nigeria and some didn't some chick hem her up? She got hemmed up over there in Nigeria. She went over there and said something disrespectful to somebody and they, they hemmed her up. You can't, other people don't play that. You can't go to their places and talk greasy. Yeah, I see they're getting that Tucker Carlson. I, he did some, Tucker, you know, I've always called him out on his suspected white supremacist views and they... they they said he said some misogynistic comments, some racist misogynistic. I'm not surprised. 
And that's not going to do nothing to sway him away from his base. Yeah, ADOS, man, again, and people try to talk down on ADOS. It's not a, again, this is not a club that we can choose and not choose. I mean, we, you're either an American, black American descendants of slaves or you're not. There's nothing to argue about. Say they, they didn't want her over there, but yeah, they got at her. They got at her heavy over there. They were, Somebody ran up on her, some chick from what I understand. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that brother over there in Greece. That brother went to Greece and they felt like he disrespected. They killed that brother and those dudes got off from what I understand. Other people don't play that. That dude, Christian, he's a known agent, so I don't take him seriously. But um speaking of bleach, um <laughs> see, I'm talking about skin bleach. Reminds me of Vibes Cartel <laughs> over here in Jamaica. Let me tell you something. Vibes Cartel, that dude, that his shit is, is bumps over here. They love him over here. And Vibes Cartel is in prison, but that dude, he, from what I'm hearing out here, he's still running the streets. He still controls the streets out here in Jamaica. You dig? That dude, Vibes Cartel, controlled the streets out here in Jamaica from jail. Yeah. Yeah, that Vibes Cartel is not no joke. That should be bumping, too. Yeah, Vibes on that stuff. Bumps. And he, from what I heard, they're telling me he he's making records from prison. He's in there making records from prison like Lucius Lyons. That vibes cartel be going hard, man. Yeah, from what I'm hearing, vibes cartel is the real deal. He's the most powerful. Part. Yeah, man. Yeah, vibes cartel is the. He, he's for real, for real. Yeah, he got the streets on lock out here. But um, again, we don't have to. <clears throat> we don't have to explain. I, I'm not. I'm not sitting up here having endless arguments with people about ADOS. If you want to acknowledge, if you are an ADOS and you want to acknowledge it, fine. If you don't want to acknowledge it, you want to be on some kumbaya. Knock yourself out. But we ain't doing that as a group. We're, we're having another approach to the way the game is going to be played now. We got another approach to the way the game is going to be played now. We're not going to let these people manipulate us for nothing. We're not going to sit up here and vote like mindless zombies. We're not going to keep bussing while playing blackjack. We're not going to keep bussing. We're bussing every time we just keep hitting for nothing. We're not being strategic about holding our cards until we see the play of our other people here. Yeah? Yeah, and see, he's not touching Shab. I haven't heard nothing from Shab in a long time. I know Buju Banton, Buju Banton, he just got out of jail. He was in jail in the U.S., so he has a real big concert coming on out here, I think in Kingston. They said he's going to perform at a stadium, and that thing is sold out. So that's about to be popping. Yeah, man, out here, you know, yeah, they, they get their party on out here. He's a world boss. Oh, yeah, Roland Martin and um, CNN wrote a letter, uh, made a statement saying that they didn't want to meet with the National um, Association of Black Journalists because of Roland Martin. They specifically said, we ain't, we ain't rocking with Roland Martin. We don't want to meet with him. So we gotta, CNN has him on the shit list. So all that buck dancing and butter biscuit caping, it, it, it's turned on you. And Sheriff Clark, do y'all know he's banned from Fox News? They're not letting him on Fox. That's why you haven't seen Sheriff Clark on Fox News in a long time. That's why you haven't seen him. They're not rocking with him. Yeah, they're cool on him. Yeah, they're cool on Sheriff Clark. 
all that butter biscuit buck dancing for nothing. And so with Cheryl Clark, he tried to ask for money. He wanted to get on Fox News full time as a paid staffer because he said he got tired of getting on there, boosting their ratings and he's not getting paid. And they was like, you kick rocks, Negro. You there? Yes, buck dancing ain't going to save you. Yeah, man. They're getting rid of their coons. But yeah, man, they party it up out here heavy. Let me get my water. Ugh. I went to a party last night. Who's from Montego Bay? Who's from Mont in, in Anybody here from Montego Bay? We went to Pier 1 last night. What's up with me and who? Who the hell is that? People ask me about random people I don't know. But um, I went to Pier 1 last night out here. There was a party at Pier 1. I don't even know who that is, dude. I hate when people mention some random person I don't know. Like, man, somebody... Jimmy Jacobs said something about you, Tariq. Who? Who in the hell is that? People telling me about some unknown person I don't know. <laughs> like, I give a damn. Who cares? Man, it's not my job to acknowledge every dumbass who say something about me. People say something about me all the time. That's, that's going to happen. I'm a public figure, so people are going to say something. Random ass people. Man, do you know Kelly Price had tweeted something about you? <laughs> okay. You ain't got to get flustered about every time somebody says something stupid. So what? Yeah. Who cares? Nigga, I'm in Jamaica right now. You think I give a damn about what some unknown person I don't know somewhere in a housing project? <laughs> Saying about my ass on a, on, a, on a channel somewhere that probably get 20 views. And you think I give a shit? I'm up here with a mouthful of jerk chicken. I'm in damn Jamaica on a beach right now. You think, Man, you know Keith Jones? Yeah, his channel, the Keith Jones channel, he had just said he made a two-hour video about you. Man, I know you ain't going to go for that. Who gives a shit? Oh, y'all asked about the some of those pictures. Oh, let me let me talk about some of those pictures that were was on my uh, my Instagram story. Let me talk about some of those pictures that was on my Instagram story, guys. <laughs> I got to put some of that stuff in context. Oh boy, let me let me put some of that stuff in context, guys. Hold on one second. Oh, man. So I put up, if you, y'all follow me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, go to um, Tariq Elite on Instagram. Y'all follow me on Instagram. But let me put this stuff in context. We're in here heavy tonight. Um, so last night, I went to Pier 1. My driver, my man from the hotel, took me to Pier 1. It was a big party out there. And he hooked me up with a chaperone. He's like, Tariq, this is this is Rick. Rick is gonna make sure you're good. So he hooked me with his partner, Rick. Rick was gonna make sure I'm good. It was like my driver said, Rick, make sure Tariq is good. Like, all right, Tariq is going, you're good. You're good with me. You're good with me. All right, so I'm going with Rick. So I'm I call him Jamaican Rick. Okay? So I go, I'm in the club, I go to the club with Rick. I call him Jamaican Rick. As a matter of fact, am I, am I freezing? Rick is the brother on the picture. When you're, the live, when you see the, the live thing on for this broadcast right now, it's me and Rick. That's me and Jamaican Rick. All right? 
So I'm in here with Jamaican Rick. Turns out Jamaican Rick is a goon. <laughs> Jamaican Rick is a goon out here. All right? The big brother, the big brother standing next to me, that's Jamaican Rick. Jamaican Rick is a goon, all right? So I go on with Rick. We go into the club. I got you, Tyler. Everything is all right. I got you. Everything, anything, you, anything you need, I got it. Everybody know me. Every, everybody know me. I got it. So he's talking to everybody. Everybody's showing respect. He's chopping it up. So we in the club. You know, he knows everybody. Chopping it up. Everybody's showing the brother respect. So we, we chill. We, we get drinks. So we just kind of post up. The club is filling out. Everything is good. Like, why are you drinking? What do you want to drink? You want to smoke something? And they, they're, they're, there's weed there and there. Weed is legal here now. Okay? Weed is legal. When I came to Jamaica last time, four years ago, it wasn't legal, but now it's legal. So they're in the, in the club selling big-ass weed sticks. They're selling weed all over the club. Like, Yo, do you want some weed? You want? I said, no, I don't smoke, Rick. Oh, you don't smoke. All right, all right, all right. All right. So I let them know I don't smoke, and I don't really drink, so just get, I, I want a soda. So I'm chilling with my soda. He done got... You know, some kind of liquor, a bottle of liquor. I don't know what Rick is. But we chilling me and Rick posted up. You're all right. You're all right. You're, you're good. So people are coming around me smoking. Rick G-checking. Hey, don't smoke around Tyreek. You don't smoke that. Go on over there. And people were moving away from me. He was He stopped people from smoking weed around me. He was checking people. Anybody who tried to smoke weed next to me, he would make them move, and their asses would move. So this is the kind of dude we're dealing with. They, you dig? So, but this is a club full of weed. I'm already getting a contact high. I'm so, but he's not letting anybody smoke directly around me. So dudes are, you know, on the side smoking over there, but not right up under me. But the club is just full of weed anyway. But all right, cool. And we're standing like by the stage. The DJ's on the stage. So we just chilling. We chilling. And everybody's talking to Rick. Rick, you know, I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I don't patois, patois. It's, but he's chopping it up with everybody. And some dudes from America, they came in and one of the dudes recognized me. And I think the dude was with some other, some Q dogs. It was some Q dogs. You, you know, the Q dogs, them niggas be doing extra shit too. The Q dogs came in with their shirts off, and they had the 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 horseshoe brand. They chopping it up with the ladies, you know. They doing Q dog shit. Shout out to the Q dogs. So you know they're in there with the shirts off, chopping it up with the ladies. And one of the brothers who was with the Q dogs, he had his clothes on, but he came. Hey, Tariq, man, I'm a big fan, man. Much respect. So he's chopping it up with me. So yeah, so you know, so you know the the club is getting packed now. Everything is packed. People are dancing, and anytime people kind of dance, get close to me, Rick would check them. Hey, back it up. Back it up. People back up. So he's just G-checking everybody. Like, I'm standing by a stage. Somebody puts their cup next to me. Watch your cup. Your cup is a hit to Rick. Don't move your cup. So he's G-checking people all night. And again, people showing the brother respect. He's hollering at the ladies, you know. And... He, Rick is one of these dudes who he'll he'll his mood will change just like that. He'll be having a good time and then he'll get real serious. So he's having a good time, you know, bopping to the music, and it was like some white guy who was standing over kind of close to us. So he went, his face got real serious. Then he went and he was talking to the white dude. And I don't know what they were talking about. The music was loud. So after a few seconds, the white dude bounced. So he came back, and Rick is just doing his thing. Then about 10, 15 minutes later, another white dude was next to Rick. Rick had a conversation with the dude. His face got real serious. Then the white dude bounced. I'm like, okay. I'm like, it must be somebody he knows or whatever. Come to find out, these were like some random white people that he just didn't like. <laughs> he was like, Told the fucking white guy, don't stand next to me. I don't like white people. I said, damn, okay. And that's another thing I've learned. Jamaican people, 
don't like white people. <laughs> Jamaicans do not like white people. I, when I the ones we have over in the states, a lot of times they send coons over there. The ones here, I ain't talking about the ones who work at the hotels. You know, they gotta play nice. Jamaicans do not like white people. Do you understand me? They are so not coons over here. I told you, I had a maid a long time ago who came to my house and said, your house is filthy like white people. But nigga, he told them to get the fuck away from them. I'm like, damn. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to white people next to me. I told him to get away. He said, I'm racist. Fuck, I to fuck your mother. I said, okay, all right, Rick. <laughs> okay. All right. He didn't want the white people standing next to him. So, so we we chilling, and he's one of these dudes. You ever been around some dudes who get real festive? What the hell is that noise? Okay, I don't, there's noise going on upstairs. I don't know what that is, but. Rick is one of these dudes who will, you know, he's getting, you know, he's drinking, he's high, he's doing his thing. And he's one of them dudes that's fun, scary. <laughs> like, we'll be, we standing there chilling, then a song come on, then he'll grab you. Tariq, just give me the light and pass the door. No, 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 Oh, shit. Oh, okay. He's just into the song. I was like, okay, all right. So he's one of these type of dudes. So different songs, <laughs> different songs come on, and then he'll get hyped, and then they start playing some American music, and uh, they play Chris Brown, and we chilling. Then he grabbed me around the neck, Tariq. These hoes ain't loyal. I hate Tariq. These hoes ain't loyal. I said, Oh shit. Okay. These hoes ain't loyal. All right. <laughs> He's one of them kind. <laughs> I'm like, damn, okay, Rick. All right. So the DJ, because they were playing different types of music, they would play international, they would play like some of the that reggae, then they'd play some American music, then they would play some EDM music. And the DJ, for some reason, just kept stopping. They play music, then he'll stop. And the cute dog dudes, they were dancing. And they were dancing with girls and freaking them and all this sort of stuff. And one of the cute dogs, every time they would stop the music, the, the one cute dog who spoke to me, I think he was a cute dog. I'm just saying he was with the other cute dogs. But every time the DJ would stop the music, hi, come back, mom, come back. Come, and he'd stop the music and the brother would be like, oh, damn, man, man, this DJ is whack. Then they play the music again. Everybody starts dancing. Everybody's dancing. Then the DJ stopped the music. Oh, where are the ladies? And the, and the brother, the American brother, was like, man, this DJ is garbage. Then they play the music. So they dancing, dancing, dancing. The DJ stopped the music. Oh, all the ladies, what's your zodiac saying? And the American brother was like, man, this DJ is gay. What the hell did he say that for? Nigga. Dude, let me tell you something. Don't ever say no shit like that to nobody in Jamaica ever. Don't say no shit like that. He said that? Nigga, Rick face pinched up. Rick was like, what the fuck did you say? What did you say? I said, oh, damn. How dare you talk to a Jamaican like that? Boom, the clock, blood, clock, clock, clock. So people are coming around calming Rick down. People had to calm Rick. Rick was about to get in them dudes for real, for real. Nigga, it was the needle scratch. When that dude said that, man, people had to come calm Rick down. Boom, the clock, fuck the mother, boom, 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 boom. I mean, all that. All that Jamaican shit he was doing. I'm like, oh, damn. I'm, I'm drinking my damn Sprite like a bitch with a straw. <laughs> Bucking my eyes. 
because these dudes spoke to me, so they might, I don't know, they think I know them. I'm not with them. I'm, that's how the American dudes, the American niggas talk to a Jamaican like that. Amer no, it ain't, no, it ain't America. It's them. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm niggas playing. <laughs> it, it ain't me. All of us don't think like that. All lives matter. Lord, I'm bucking my eyes a little bit. No, we all don't think like that. No, 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 no. I don't know them. I don't know them like that. They know me, but I don't know them. Nigga, Rick was about to get in them. So the Q dog, some of them Q dogs start putting their clothes back on. They're like, shit. They start putting their clothes back on. One of the Q dogs, he started nigga explaining. He was like, well, see, understand, we don't really mean anything like that. A part um, in American culture, uh, we say that, but it don't mean nothing. So they nigga explaining. Oh my god. Oh, they about to turn this thing out. And Rick, Derek, how the fuck they say that about a Jamaican? Again? Oh, you, I don't know what he's, I don't know what Rick is saying. I'm like, uh huh. I'm agreeing with this shit. He's talking in patrol. I don't know what he. I don't know what he said. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing. I'm like, hell yeah, man. I, I, I feel that. I, I, I feel, I feel that. <laughs> Shit! No, no. Is that what the Americans think? No, 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 bro. We don't know. No, no, no. We don't think that. We don't think that at all. Shit! So I'm all, I'm already tripping because I got a contact high. In there. So, oh my god! So we're in there chilling. So Rick is at his ass to calm down, calm this nigga down, get some women to dance with his ass to calm him down. Whoo, get him back. All right, we got we got Rick back. We got him back to where he needed to be. Because <laughs> Rick was about to get in them dudes for real, for real. He's about to turn up and every he's clicked in with all these other gangsters in the club. So oh my, my God, I don't want to be in the middle of this. This is my chaperone. So I'm gonna have to be in the mix. I ain't, I'm in the middle of Montego Bay with no transportation. Understand me? I don't know where I am. <laughs> so I was high and scared. <laughs> so anyway, that ain't even the gist of everything. So we calm Rick down. So now the music is playing. There's girls around and all this stuff. So people are getting up on the little stage dancing. People are getting up on the stage dancing. Different girls are getting on stage twerking. And you know, the club is popping. And you know, Rick is dancing and all this. Shit. And there's one girl standing over me dancing. And then Rick was like, bum, blood clot. Nasty guy. I said, what? I'm thinking he's saying a, that's like some Jamaican shit. Because I keep hearing, I hear blood clot. <laughs> like, blood clot, nasty guy. I'm, I'm going along with it. I'm like, blood clot. Nasty guy, blood clot. Nasty guy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's a dance or some shit. The North, the blood clot. The nasty guy, nasty guy. I'm like, move your body, move your body. Nasty guy, nasty guy. I'm, I don't know what it is. I'm semi high and scared, so I'm just going along with this shit. <laughs> nasty guy, nasty guy. I'm doing a butterfly with nasty guy, nasty guy. Blood clot. I said no, the girl is bleeding. Nigga, I look up. This chick is twerking directly over my head. She has a green cat suit, a little whatever, and a big blood stain dripping down her thigh. Twerking directly over me. Oh, God. And there's people taking pictures, and this nigga smacking the bloody ass. <laughs> nasty guy. Nasty guy. I'm like, sloshing the bloody butt cheeks. I'm like, okay, I really need to get my ass home. I just need to go home. I'm too old for this type of shit. That, that really, man, I don't need to be going out. I'm really too old to be going out. I'm not, I can't. I put it, you, you, if you look at my snap, uh, at my Instagram snap, there's a picture of it. I put the, I put the woman there, I put it. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see this woman twerking <laughs> with a blood stain. I'm like Rick. I'm 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 ready to go, Rick. I'm I'm scared, high, and disgusted right now. I, I don't know. I'm just a lot of emotions going on. 
I just gotta go. Oh God! So that's, that was it for me. That was it for me. Oh God! I mean, her homegirls. Nobody told me she's busting it open. You saw the video? Yeah, if y'all go to my Instagram, you can actually see the damn video. Ugh. Ugh, God. So she has on like a green, a light green outfit, and it's bleeding. She looked like a cut open watermelon. It was disgusting. It wasn't just like a little blood, just a big glob of blood down her thigh. And she's clapping her butt cheek. And I think I felt a little drop on my ear. Oh, my God. Oh no! <laughs> I got coochie blood drops. Bummer! Now I got a voodoo curse on me. Lord, I'm disgusted. So I, I went and got some jerk chicken. I said, "Don't put no sauce on it. I don't want no sauce. It's gonna remind me of the period blood. I don't want no sauce on my jerk chicken." Oh God, dude. I'm like, I'm just, I'm way too old to be going through this type of shit. I'm too old for this. This ain't, I, I'm not used to this type of stuff going out. When I went out, just you, you did normal stuff back in my day, back in the old days. Now I'm, I'm talking like an old nigga. Back in the olden days, I didn't have to deal with Jamaican goons, <laughs> moist dudes. Weed sticks and period blood. I just didn't have to deal with that in my day. I'm just trying to go out and have a cultural experience. And God damn. Oh, God. So now I think I got a blood drop on my ear. So if my ear starts looking funny, my ear turns into another nigga. <laughs> Be another nigga hanging off my ear. <laughs> <laughs> it be a Jamaican nigga hanging off my ear. I got a whole new nigga. Blood clot. <laughs> Let's go to America. I want to go to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey School for boys! He want to go to the fake Umar Johnson School. <laughs> I have a, a, a conscious nigga on my ear. <laughs> Because this woman coochie blood then popped on my ear and the shit then grew. <laughs> uh, I spill blood in Selma! <laughs> oh, God. But again, you can see the video. You can go to my gram. If you got the stomach for it, you can see the video. Uh, dude, I cannot understand Patois to save my life. That's just like another language. I can't catch because there's so many different versions of it. That's why it's hard to catch. Sometimes you got the real fast. Then it's real slow like my man Rick. Then it's, it's so many different versions of the Patois. So it's hard to catch. Oh my goodness. Oh God. So yeah, um I I don't mean I don't need to go to no damn parties, man. I'm this is too much for me. I'm too over this it. I'm like, I I need to be at home drinking some metamucil and going to sleep. I don't need to be dealing with this. God damn. But it was an experience. A shout out to Rick. Shout out to Jamaican Rick. <laughs> Man, what's up, D. Jones? Respect, respect. Oh, you, you saw Period Patty? Oh my God, that's it's a lot of blood. I'm t if you want to see, yeah, it looked like a water. If you got the stomach for it, just go to my Instagram. Go to my Instagram stories. If you have the stomach, I'm just telling you, it's not a pretty sight, guys. Yeah, I, I can't do that. I can't. No, I'm good. I, I I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't do that. This young gen, what y'all got going on in clubs now? I can't do it. I'm 
I can't do it. Whew. Oh, yeah, if you look at my Instagram story, in my Instagram story, I'm showing the dude selling the weed in the club. It's, I'm showing me and Rick chilling. I'm showing the girl standing around us. I'm showing the girl on stage. Yeah. Man. Yeah, she, she's grinning and she's just popping her ass like she's oblivious to it. I'm like, oh, my God. You just saw it. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, it's, 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 on Tariq Elite on my ground. On Tariq Elite. But um, anyway, let me get out of here, man. It's been real. Um, Y'all need to go get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4. Get Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, and 4 at hiddencoloursfilm.com. But another thing, but, uh, but before I go, something that's interesting, the lesson I got from that, hanging out with Jamaican Rick, Rick and Jamaican people and foreign people, period, you can't even halfway disrespect their culture. You can't disrespect nobody from where they're from. You understand that? We, ADOS, we have to get on that. We have to get on that because I respect how Rick is standing up for his folks. He didn't let outsiders come in there and disrespect, which was the guys didn't really know that they were being disrespectful, but he G-checked them anyway. He would not let them even attempt to disrespect anybody from his culture. It was about respect. You understand? And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. We have to be on that. See, people come over there to the States and they immigrate and they, they have... They talk all types of crazy about us and we sit back and see, we got this thing where we're supposed to be abused. No, we're not. You check people, especially foreigners and outsiders trying to speak on our business. You can't do that nowhere else. You can't come over here. They'll light your ass up if you try to just say something halfway slick about somebody from here, let alone get into their political business. You understand? We, as ADOS, we got to be on that. And I'm on that already. I don't let nobody, if you're a foreigner or somebody from somewhere else, you ain't supposed to be talking about us, period, in a negative way. Especially after you eating off us. No. You G-check their ass. You dig? So that's the lesson that we should get from that. All right, y'all. It's been real. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Go to Tangibles2020.com. And you guys have a great night. I am going to holla. Y'all be good.